Hello, my name's Dave Lacey and I'm the Sales Director for Grunfoss Domestic Building Services in the UK. Grunfoss as a business started in 1945 in Denmark and has since grown to become one of the leaders in the world of pumping globally. We have over 16 million pumps produced every year. We have over 3 billion in turnover and employ more than 19,000 people. In the UK, we're most known for our domestic heating circulators. Today, I'd like to talk about the importance of system balancing in wet central heating systems. Hydronic or hydraulic balancing of a heating system ensures that warm water is efficiently distributed through that heating system to the heat emitters, be it radiators or underfloor heating. In a balanced system, the correct amount of water is supplied to each radiator uh, as required. Systems that aren't balanced can have some radiators get hot too quickly or heat, overheat the rooms, whereas other rooms are cold. The radiators can become noisy and also the boiler may be overworked or using more energy than it needs to. So let's have a look at a typical two-pipe wet central heating system shown here in this diagram. As you can see, the radiator nearest to the pump has actually got the maximum pressure differential across it because it's very close to the pump where, where the pressure is coming from. The radiator at the extreme end of the system has got the smallest pressure differential across it because the pressure has been lost in forcing that water through the pipes, fittings and elbows and bends etc to get the water to that radiator. If we ran that system without balancing then all the water from the boiler would simply go through the first radiator which would get hot very quickly and the return water going back to the boiler would get hot very quickly whereas the radiator on the extreme probably wouldn't get hot so we'd have a very hot room and probably a very cold room. That can be quite a common complaint. In a balanced system, however, every single radiator gets the correct amount of water that it needs in order to deliver the heat appropriate for the particular room that it's in. That way the house gets warm evenly, the boiler return temperature is kept cold for as long as possible, and as you'll see later, the energy efficiency of the system is improved. Let's have a look at a typical unbalanced heating system. This diagram is from some research carried out in 2015 and as you can see the radiator closest to the pump and therefore the boiler is oversupplied with hot water whereas the radiator furthest away is undersupplied. Now the effect of that is that in some rooms they get too hot, in other rooms they don't get warm enough, the radiators furthest away do not get enough heat to warm certain rooms. A hidden effect is that the return temperature going back to the heat source, whether that's a heat pump or a boiler, gets hot very quickly and that can affect the efficiency of that appliance. The pump is also overworked. As a complaint, the customer will normally say that actually it's those radiators aren't getting hot that are the problem or they'll simply say some rooms are too cold. So what happens when we get the complaint that a room or a radiator isn't getting hot? Quite often there will be a quick fix applied which will be to turn the pump speed up. So turn it up from say one or two to number three. Also we may find that the boiler thermostat gets turned up as well so the boiler is delivering hotter water. In some cases that may appear to fix the problem because that last radiator does eventually get enough heat and the room is no longer cold. But if you look again at the diagram, what's really happening is that first radiator is even more being oversupplied with water stroke heat. The boiler itself is being overworked now and as, as maybe not as efficient as it should be. The pump is working even harder. So what may look like a functional fix and something that makes that radiator get warm in the back bedroom, as an example, actually is now costing much, much more in energy efficiency. A better approach 
to resolving this problem is to balance the heating system. And as you can see from this diagram from the same research, all the radiators are now getting the correct flow for the rooms in which they're fitted. By doing this we're making sure that the pump is producing or delivering the right amount of water and by doing so it's consuming a lot less power. The boiler or heat pump on this system will also improve its efficiency by being delivered with return water temperature at a much lower level for as long as possible. So it's, also, it's about balancing for not only comfort but also for the efficiency of the heating system. Well there's various different ways of doing it within the market. Uh, the most common of all is probably the gut feeling approach. This is where when the heating system fires up all the rads get warm roughly so that's fine. From a comfort point of view it might be fine but from an efficiency point of view we might not be ticking all the boxes. Some thermostatic radiator valve manufacturers use a table lookup and use adjustments on their valves in order to set the valve correctly for a particular room. A lot of flue gas analyzers and electric multimeters now have electronic temperature sensing or thermometers, electric thermometers. And you can measure the temperature differential across each individual radiator and adjust it to make sure that you get the design temperature differential. There are some more advanced controls generally used on commercial systems where you actually build flow sensors into individual legs of the heating system. But this can be quite, uh, quite costly and a bit prohibitive in a domestic application. Grunfoss have the Alpha 3 system, which measures the flow to individual radiators and guides an installer through the process of adjusting valves and balancing via an app on his smartphone. This is quite easy to do, quite intuitive, and can reduce the time taken to correctly balance a heating system to between one and two hours on a typical system. Well, in the building regulations, persistent balancing is described as expected practice, to use the terminology. In other words, this should be done on every boiler and system install. We conducted some market research recently of over 250 installers. 50% said they were familiar with system balancing and use it regularly. If it's done, however, it's generally done for the comfort reasons rather than efficiency. So it's done more about heating the radiators than it is about are we heating the radiators efficiently. A common comment we had back was if all radiators get hot, what's the problem? A, an independent UCAS accredited research organisation called Enatec recently carried out some experimental and CFD modelling to consider the efficiency effects of a system that's either balanced or not balanced. And they used a typical three bedroom UK home as their baseline to look at what are the additional costs of inefficient balancing. So with one unbalanced radiator, they showed that three and a half percent extra energy costs could be accredited, which is about 24 pound 50 a year in a three bedroom home. With functional balancing, not necessarily efficient balancing, that could add 7.8% to a typical bill, which is, could be 54, 55 pounds a year. With a badly balanced system where all the valves are simply open, that can add as much as 27% to energy costs, which in a, again, a three bedroom home, that could be 189, 190 pounds. With a much bigger system, that could be even more. Other studies we've looked at show that there are potentially 9 to 27% extra energy costs if a system is not balanced. Clearly the more out of balance it is, the higher the costs are. So it's important to not only balance to make sure that all the radiators get hot and the house gets warm, but it does it in the most efficient way. So therefore we talk about balancing for efficiency.